as a piece of paper that is not cut with a crosscut shredder. So it, burning it alone is not good enough. Shredding it and burning it would be ideal. Yeah, it, you can chemically reassemble burned paper pretty easily. Absolutely. Again, we're going to go through the same process online. So what we've done with our, our real life subscriptions, our magazines, our newspapers, our books, our blockbusters, and Netflixes, uh, we also want to do with any identities we've established online. So this is MySpace, Friendster, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, you name it, really, any, any profile that you've created for any service needs to go away. If you've got the ability to destroy or remove it, you should do so, or, <clears throat> excuse me, you should at least request its removal. In many cases, you can't really know whether or not the organizations that possess this information will get rid of it. We also make a note here about cleaning up search history, and we don't just mean your browser search history. We mean going to sites like Google and Yahoo, and where possible, again, essentially selecting the option to clean up the information that they've collected about the searches that you've conducted. Now, this isn't really enough. We, we take two approaches now to moving forward and becoming anonymous. The first approach is what we're going to call nothing in the cloud. The idea being, as you take on a new identity and as you become anonymous, you're going to host and own all of your own data and all of your own infrastructure. So this means whether you're co-locating or whether you're carrying a shuttle form factor PC with your own mail server via dynamic IPs around with you, the idea is that we keep all of our information within our control. I will place emphasis on the fact that the, the only acceptable solution here is still to encrypt everything. Of course, the second approach is the absolute inverse of this, and that is host nothing or everything in the cloud, right? The idea being own no data that can incriminate you or identify you. So you don't own your infrastructure. You don't own your information. Instead, you put all of your information online, and you use strictly cloud-based <laughs> services. But again, I will emphasize, you'll note the same bullet point, you must encrypt everything. Now, We'll talk a little bit more about encryption as we make our way through the presentation. One of the things to bear in mind is encryption is both good and bad when we're talking about privacy. And we'll make some differentiations and we'll point out kind of the hows and whys as we get there. Lastly, you're going to want to format and reinstall all of your own machines. You're going to want to create any and all new accounts for those services that you must have. Now, as we make our way through these multiple levels, you're going to learn that in many cases, we are going to suggest avoiding the internet when possible, right? The internet is an extraordinary tracking mechanism for those with time, money, and resources. And the more you participate, the more likely you are going to be to create tracks. Myself, I went for the route of hosting uh, everything on my own. I actually have transdermal micro SD implants behind the keyboard tattooed on my arm. Uh, <laughs> right, so uh, that said, all right, we move now into part one. Part one is the cloak level of anonymity. And Adam, I turn it back over to you. All right. Okay, so step one. First important thing is to actually become anonymous. <clears throat> it's important to at least make up a new name, right? You may not legally change it, but at least come up with a new name to start using on a regular basis. And your new name should be clever in that your name should consist of names, individual names that can be used well as first and last names. One example here is James Wilson Martin Lawrence. So as, as James Wilson Martin Lawrence, you can identify yourself as James Martin, Wilson Lawrence, Wilson Martin, James Lawrence, Martin Wilson. You've got a lot of combinations. And if that's your legal name, all of those can be used appropriately in your real life and present yourself as different IDs. You want to come up with an alternative ID. Now you'll see here we have it yellow. We're not at this point at all talking about a government ID. We're talking about a picture ID that is not official. Um, but you can use it in general purpose throughout your life. Disposable email addresses is going to be the way to go for an online identity. Dodge it and Gorilla Mail are the first steps. Uh, they're the best way to go because basically you can give anyone an email address at that domain and then go to the website and they post all the mail they receive from any email address on their domain. So while it's not private at all, it's completely anonymous. If you need to go the Gmail or Yahoo route and establish a more permanent email address, that's OK. But be careful and realize that as a stateful service that you're logging into, you are establishing a sense of identity online. Uh, mailbox rentals, uh, mailboxes, et cetera, or a friend as a third party address that will reforward your mail to you is a great way to go. You can also use a scanned mail service, which will accept your, email, uh, your postal mail online and then post it as images. And you can let them know which to scan and open 
and then redisplay over the internet. The advantage there is you don't have to physically pick up your mail, so you don't have to worry about being identified in person, but someone is opening and reading your mail as they scan it. So there's a privacy issue. And this is why we make the distinction here, as Adam said before, there are things that we describe as anonymous but not private, and in, right. in the converse, private but not an anonymous. Oftentimes the two work closely together. In many cases, though, they are at cross purposes here uh, as we go through these steps. And this is one of those lines that you're going to have to walk as you determine what's more important, your privacy or anonymity. Next thing is you're going to have to find a place to live, right? So single room occupancy is great because someone else has got their name on the property, someone else is paying the utilities, and you're paying them cash. So you effectively have no real uh, identity at that location. You can pick up and vanish at any point in time and move on to another one. Um, other alternatives are an unregistered RV that you park somewhere. Uh, it does not have to be uh, licensed or registered, and you can just live on the property if you're able to find a property. Uh, you can also look in kibbutz, which is uh, an Israel uh, commun commune or uh, a nudist colony. Any of these approaches would work fairly well. Just make sure you don't drink the Kool-Aid, right? And use suntan lotion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, so making money at the cloak level affords us a number of opportunities, not the least of which is, of course, the world's oldest profession. Bearing in mind that we've got other options here as well, the, the distinction here or the emphasis being placed on jobs that pay cash, right? The easiest way to begin the process of becoming anonymous, and here at the cloak level, we're, we're kind of sticking strictly to a cash basis. We want to do things that are, in fact, or indeed cash transactions. So day labor, working in the service industry, and some of these things, you know, there's a fine line. You may or may not be able to work for cash even within the service industry. Now, one thing we want to point out is that by telling you to work for jobs jobs that pay cash, we're not necessarily advocating that you don't pay your taxes, right? We, we, we want you to pay your taxes. We love the IRS just as much as everyone else. That's right. So bear in mind that there are also opportunities Hi. as well here for, for short-term <laughs> transactions like graphics and web design. And, and short of all that, if you can't find anything else to do, there's always porn. <laughs> we had to work really hard to find time that was safe for all audiences, so we thought we did a pretty good job here. <laughs> All right. Uh, using money at the cloak level uh, it, uh, pr provides us uh, equal opportunities here to stick to a cash use basis. So we're going to try to stick to using cash when making transactions. This means uh, theoretically things like money orders are probably acceptable as well. You can purchase these over the counter at the customer service desk of most drug stores, convenience stores, or grocery stores. We can also now get things like these uh, value stored gift cards, right? You go in and you put up to $500 on what appears to be a Visa card, but in essence, it's kind of like a short-term use account. In essence, you're paying for a, a gift card, but you can use it as a MasterCard or a Visa card if you need to, for instance, uh, perform online transactions. We talk about check cashing services, classifieds cash auctions. Classifieds are great, cash auctions. This could include eBay as long as we're not using something like PayPal because at the cloak level, we are assuming the lack of a bank account. Again, we're sticking here to cash that you maintain in your own possession. Ca check cashing services are probably acceptable, so if you need to accept checks, you can, bearing in mind that you'll generally pay a rather significant fee to allow a check cashing service to cash your checks rather than going directly to the bank. But as most of you know, banks now have new legal requirements for uh, providing identity when you're cashing checks. In fact, I know Bank of America, if you are not an account holder, at least up until recently, and this is probably still true, required a thumbprint to go cash a check written to you by someone who has a Bank of America account. And that's rather significant just to cash a check. Uh, we talk about digital money or we make references here to digital money. There are not as many options here today as there used to be. It seems that with the dot bomb, uh, a lot of the e-cash type services went away. Amongst those that remain, e-gold kind of still stands near the top, but you may or may not have the opportunity to use e-gold. In other words, e-gold may not be a real valid option at the places where you are intending to uh, make transactions. And then finally, of course, get yourself a sugar daddy or a sugar mama and let somebody else pay for all of your stuff. 
And one of the things that's important at the, uh, the money level at all three of these levels is you're going to notice that in an attempt to become anonymous, you will essentially start paying more for the goods and services you're looking for. Um, it, it's an unfortunate trade-off that we see no way around. And that's uh, something you'll need to take into account in 